Hi, and welcome to NRHA Inside Raining. I'm Jennifer Reynolds, and this week we're in Tampa Bay, Florida, looking for the sun. For most folks, it's been a doozy of a winter. After six months of wind and snow, a double dose of Tampa Bay is just what the doctor ordered. A week of 70s and sunshine's been great. It's just good to get out of the, the cold up in Ohio. It's been a bad winter for everybody, so isn't it nice to be down here in the sunshine? I mean, the winter blues are over. We're at the Florida Raining Classic in Tampa Bay, and we'll have highlights of the Open Derby and the Bill Horn Shootout. The raining action here's been hot enough to give spring a kickstart. Later in the inside hand, NRHA professional John Rossi has some tips on changing leads in those small circles. And I'm Dr. Joe Carter, and coming up next on Your Horse Inside and Out, sponsored by Beringer Ingelheim, we're going to talk about wrecks that foals can get into. Match your judging skills against the experts in... You be the judge! That's all coming up on NRHA Inside Raining. It's as intricate as figure skating, as exciting as rodeo. It's raining, the hottest discipline in the horse world. From the early days when eager riders slid their horses wherever and whenever they could, raining has turned into a sophisticated international sport, taking the world by storm. Join us for the next half hour as we go behind the scenes to meet the people, places, and horses that make raining great. This is NRHA Inside Raining. The Bob Thomas Equestrian Center in Tampa Bay is the home of the Florida Reigning Classic, which includes the Bill Horn Shootout. It's a whole week of great competition for everybody from entry level to the top professionals, including an open day built into the schedule to give everybody a chance to enjoy all Tampa Bay has to offer. What's not to love about the Florida Reigning Classic? Um, we are here in February in Tampa. It is 80 degrees. The sun is shining. We have outdoor pens, indoor pens, covered arenas, places to just go ride. Bush Gardens right around the corner. The beaches are 15 minutes away. We have five-star dining. Um, we have Disney World 60 miles away. So to come here and make it a family event and to spend a week in Florida in February, it's great to get your horses out. We have great weather here, so we offer a lot of horse shows, um, pretty much one a month down here. So people within the club have opportunities to show pretty much every month and um, really good competitors here. A lot of world champions come out of Florida, and we're just really excited about the direction that the club is going. Uh, looking at the growth that this event is experiencing, you know, 50 stalls uh, added this, uh, this year in 2014 to take it to 500 in total is a phenomenal testament to the job that uh, FRHA uh, does. With the new addition that the NRHA uh, made in bringing in the adaptive program, that's something we're super excited about uh, as well. We think that it's, it's going to get better and better and better, and, and we hope to, we'll be a part of it for a long time. I first came down to this facility a few years ago, and we just loved the facility. It's so big and open. and. You know, when you come from upstate New York in the middle of winter, it's nice to get into the warm weather, but really the people down here are just fantastic. They're so hospitable and magnanimous, and it just was a place we wanted to be and wanted to be associated with. And then we get down here and we're back in action again. We're ready to start working, you know. looking We're looking for three-year-olds. The guys are working hard in the barns. But that's what, that's what it's all about. I mean, a big show like this wakes us up. Our first rider in the Florida Classic Open Derby is Dean Brown, based at Santa Hill Farms in Campbell Hall, New York. He's riding Bob Santagata's Spooks Sugar Rose. This is a five-year-old mare. Sean Florida rode as a three- and four-year-old. She's had some soundness issues and is just now back in the show pen. And this is my first time showing her, so I was a little tentative in what she was going to do, but she was there for me the whole way. I probably could have trusted her more than I did, but she did, was, did a really good job for me. A 223.5 from the first horse out in the level four open will certainly wake everybody up, and that's just the first of three horses Dean is riding for Santa Hill. NRHA Hall of Fame member Sean Flareter, reigning's all-time leading rider, is up next on a son of Hall of Fame member Gunner, NRHA $5 million sire. They slip in right behind Dean Brown with a 223. You know, he's really fun to ride. Um, he's a gunner. You know, and he, he's a little quieter horse. You don't have quite as much feel, but he tries really, really hard. It was fun to show him tonight because he's he's starting to come into his own. Now here's Peter DeFridis of Leland, North Carolina, who's riding a couple of horses for Double Run Farms. The first is Wimpy's Little Freckle. 
This event is for horses ages 4, 5, and 6, the level 4 open division being for the highest earning professional riders. Mares, stallions, and geldings all compete equally, as do men and women. Now, Peter's been riding this 5-year-old in competition for two years now, and they rack up a solid 225 to move into first. He's, he's gotten a lot better in the last, like the end of last year and the beginning of this year, he's gotten a lot more simple and um, just easier to prepare, you know. Uh, gotten a lot more broke so that's made it things a lot easier. Another big score from Gabe Hutchins riding for Darling Triple Eight Ranch in Princeton, Kentucky at 224.5. Really matured up and really came. I marked a 20 on him last year but never could get over that 20 and he showed me tonight he can really do that mark 24. He was really good. So did it kind of surprise you or did you know it was there? And just no I, I knew it was there and I knew it was there last year I just couldn't get it all put together and I, I knew now coming here I could get him put together. Here's Sean Flair to back now and another son of Gunner. This one, a five-year-old named Yankee Gun, owned by Archese Quarter Horses USA. This horse marked a 232 to win the 2012 All-American Quarter Horse Congress Open Futurity, but struggled a little as a four-year-old. No struggle here in Tampa as Yankee Gun puts all his firepower into this run and marks a humongous 234 from the judges. You know, he's really intense. And then I run to the stop. I mean, I don't think I ever had to pick my hand up. I just said, whoa, and he just stopped. I mean, what a, it's a great feeling from a horseman's standpoint because you, know, don't, you don't get it put together that often to that level. <laughs> but, you know, I think them runs like that, they just happen. You know, you, you, I don't think you can plan for them or prep for them. And, you know, we dream about them. <laughs> but you, you don't ever know if it's going to work. But it worked tonight. And I can't thank Mr. Archese for having the confidence in me and, and allowing me to have this horse. Dean Brown's back now in a second horse, a flashy white-faced mare who shows her talent right off the bat with a beautiful run-in stop and back up. Spooky Nick's a four-year-old by Spook's Got a Gun, owned by Bob Santagata and Arlene Bedros. She and Dean put a sparkling run together and earn a 227.5 from the judges to slide in behind Sean and Yankee Gun. She stepped up today and just dazzled me, I would say. I mean, I knew it was in there and I trusted her to do it. Warming her up, she was telling me she was going to be good and she was. She just ran in there and did her job and never said no one time. After a couple of back-to-back -back runs like those, you might think Martina Morell of Erieville, New York would be just a little bit intimidated, but that's not in her nature. She just lets it rip on Dunn Got a Prize, owned by Lee Garber of Casaboo Farms. A 225.5 is the result of Martina's moxie, which will bump her ahead of Peter DeFritis by half a point and put her in third. Well, I had kind of planned to go in and do it a little bit like Bill Horn. Go in, run in, stop, back up, turn, turn, and get to circling. Um, and it really worked. I would usually wait a lot more in the center before I turned, but I just decided not to tonight. Uh, and he, he got through it great. He stopped immense every time. I hit a little bit of bad dirt on the, on the last stop, um, and he circled like a dream. And he always circles like a dream. He's one of the funnest horses I've ever had to, to run in circle because he, you know, he stays right there with me the whole time. Next, the NRHA's newest million-dollar rider, Mike McIntyre. Dean Brown's final horse, plus multiple non-pro champion of this event, Josie Ann Gautier, looking for her first win here as a professional. We'll wrap up our coverage of the Florida Reigning Classic Open Derby from Tampa Bay when we come back. You're watching NRHA's Inside Reigning. For more information about anything you see in this show, go to InsideRaining.com. Inside Raining Training Secrets Volume 7 is now available with Jordan Larson on managing the downward transition, Todd Crawford on starting your horse in the rollback, Josh Visser on starting your horse in the circles, Mark Rafis on keeping your horse soft in the stop, and Dave Moore on making smooth lead changes. You can buy Inside Raining Training Secrets 7 for $19.99 plus shipping and handling, or buy multiple Training Secrets DVDs and save up to 25%. Order at InsideRaining.com. Sit alone and talk. Watch your heart. Make a lazy circle to the sky. You know we belong to the land. And the land we belong to is red. Oklahoma, come see for yourself. 
Rookie Days, presented by Classic Equine. I'm going to show you one more thing. And NRHA Regional Clinics. Slide your hand up his neck. Both give riders across the country a chance to learn from the pros. Whoever came up with this idea, it was awesome. It gets people started on the right track. They see what the industry's about. It's been great. I came here with very, very little experience. The amount of information given to you is phenomenal. To find a Rookie Day or regional clinic near you, go to nrha.com. Their hats are very quality product. We want to look our best, and, you know, they hold their shape. They stay on your head, you know. You don't see people wearing shorties hats going around doing this while they're showing. They fit your head. They stay on really good. They're very classy looking, just a very top-end product. Best ever. Those two ladies are always stand behind their product. Customer service is, is phenomenal. Just, just a great company. Welcome back to NRHA Inside Raining, coming to you from the Florida Raining Classic in Tampa Bay. The NRHA's leading rider is at the top of the scoreboard after a jaw-dropping ride on Yankee Gun for a 234. Dean Brown and Spooky Nick are second with a 227.5, and Martina Morell and Dunn got a prize third with a 225.5. Wes Holmes of McGee Farms Performance Horses in King, North Carolina, is riding Chicks Dig Scars, a gelding who shows his versatility, stepping up as an open horse today, marking a 223 after showing earlier this week for owner David McGee in the non-pro. He's been a good one for a long time. Uh, David is actually the only one that's shown him up to this point. Uh, I've gotten to show him schooling, that kind of thing. So uh, I was very excited for the opportunity. Double Run Farms' one mighty Aphrodite is up next with Peter DeFritis, who's already marked a 225. He comes away with a 224 on this second horse by NRHA million dollar sire Conquistador Wiz. That mare, she's, she's pretty, pretty consistent, you know. She's been good for me for a long time. Right. Brandon Brandt is riding his final horse now, Joe Wolf's Walla Walla Bang Bang, a six-year-old stud by Gunner. I ran pretty hard, so I knew uh, knew how to go go fast. Everybody is. Yeah, I felt pretty good. I mean, he's he's a show horse. He can warm up uh, average, and he's going to go in and show pretty good. Uh, Joe Wolf owns him. I can't thank him enough for giving me the opportunity to show him, and uh, uh, he's, he's a good horse. A 226.5 for Brandon Brandt, and Walla Walla Bang Bang will move them past Martina Morell and into third. Josie Ann Gautier won this event several times as a non-pro, but she's turned pro now, and she's looking for a first win here. She's had some good luck on this horse, H.A. the Looney Tune by I.M. Chairman and owned by Fontley Garrido of the Dominican Republic. The main thing is to build his confidence, right. and he's getting to where he's such a kind of intense horse, and he needs to build his confidence to be able to do this and believe in himself. So for him to do it twice within a short period of time, for me just... I'm really happy with him, and I think this run will take it easy for the next few months, and I think do it again, and he's going to become pretty solid, I think. Josie Ann Gautier matches Brandon Brent's 226.5 to tie for third. Mike McIntyre of Selma, North Carolina, has just crossed over a million dollars in NRHA earnings, and he's one of our last two riders. He's on board Stanley Coates Stallion Wimpy's Flashy Jack by NRHA $5 million sire Wimpy's Little Step. These two were reserved here in 2013, but they're not able to put that kind of run together this year. He was really good. He was a little bit slow maybe in his right turn, but he, uh, he tried everywhere. He did everything, so I, I sure can't complain about him. He was nice. Dean Brown will close out the competition on his third horse now. He's currently sitting second with a 227.5 on Spooky Nick. This final horse, Pine Sale's Wimpy, is by Wimpy's Little Step out of Pine Sale, an own daughter of Hall of Fame member Joe Cody. I really love this. He's got so much talent and almost more talent than he knows what to do at times and gets himself in a little trouble because he can try too hard. These two are fourth at the Quarter Horse Congress, and they step up here in Tampa for another 226.5, which will give Dean a share of third, along with the reserve championship in Level 4 and the Level 3 championship. And to think, he almost didn't get here because his wife was about to have a baby. Two weeks ago on Friday, he was born on Valentine's Day, so we weren't sure we we're going to get to come show in his own derby, but she, she had him a week early. He's all healthy. I was able to come down here and... So it was, a, it was, we love the place though. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. The weather's great, the ground's great, and the show management is unbelievable. So hats off to your wife for having a baby early? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Josie Ann Gautier and Brandon Brandt share the level two championship and level one goes to Wes Holmes. 
Sean Flaherty and Yankee Gun dominate level four to win the Florida Reigning Classic Open Derby Championship. So these guys put such a great horse show on. They put a lot of time in it, a lot of effort. Organization was awesome. A great friend, well I got two great friends, Ann Edmonius does a great job. Jeff Kirkbride, another friend of mine, absolutely awesome. Thanks. Hey, <laughs> I'm glad you didn't kiss me. <laughs> Still ahead, a quick look at the highlights of the Billhorn shootout, a tribute to a one-of-a-kind reigning legend. We did a little deal and everybody took a little shot and a little toast to BH and said, yeah, rock and roll. Now, your horse inside and out with Dr. Joe Carter, sponsored by Beringer Ingelheim. Today on Your Horse Inside and Out, we're going to talk about wrecks that your foals can get into. And you know, here we have an example of a, a foal that uh, is about nine, ten days old. The mother was going to be bred on her foal heat. And um, this foal got into a big wreck, ran into a fence, it's got a, multiple lacerations here in its chest and forearm area. Uh, Dr. Arnold's sewing uh, these uh, injuries up right now, but you know, it just Foals are just very easy to get into trouble, get into uh, disaster situations where they're going to get injured. And this particular foal uh, got injured because they were live covering the mare. And they didn't use adequate uh, restraint techniques to uh, make sure that the foal wasn't going to get injured. Um, you need to probably have a foal in its own little box or on its own little box stall, sedating the mother where she's not um, too excitable, hobbling the mare to where she's uh, restrained a little bit. Those are things that you can do to help in those live cover situations, um, you know, help these foals not get injured. The other thing that this foal did when it got loose, it uh, ran and it, it got into a, a barbed wire fence. Well, barbed wire and horses generally don't go together. You definitely want to have them in a different situation where they're in smooth wire you know, piping cable, board fencing, plastic fencing, any of those kind of fencing you know, are a lot safer, you know, for these uh, young horses. And so, you know, foals are certainly um, typically fractious. They don't like to be separated from their mother. Um, you need to try and keep them in a situation where there's maybe some sight between the two of them. I, I particularly like taking the mare and the foal into a stall if we're going to do a live cover and then bring the foal, the mare outside of that stall where the mother's right there by it then you can cover the mare with your stallion. You know, these are all little tricks, you know, but you gotta be thinking ahead in these situations or you try and keep those foals from getting hurt. And I'm Dr. Joe Carter with your horse Inside and Out. Your horse Inside and Out with Dr. Joe Carter is sponsored by Beringer Ingelheim, makers of Vetera. Before making any decisions about your horse's health, be sure to consult your veterinarian. It's easy to provide the most current protection with the full Vetera line of vaccines. Vetera provides choices with a range of combinations that protects against up to eight diseases in one convenient vaccine, including trusted West Nile virus. With Vetera Gold and Vetera Gold Plus VEE, you can be confident knowing your horse's vaccines are convenient using cutting-edge technology, and they include the Ohio 2003 influenza strain and the 2005 West Nile virus horse isolate. Contact your veterinarian to see which Vetera vaccines fit your horse. Inside Reining Training Secrets Volume 7 is now available with Jordan Larson on managing the downward transition, Todd Crawford on starting your horse in the rollback, Josh Visser on starting your horse in the circles, Mark Rafus on keeping your horse soft in the stop, and Dave Moore on making smooth lead changes. You can buy Inside Reining Training Secrets 7 for $19.99 plus shipping and handling, or buy multiple Training Secrets DVDs and save up to 25%. Order at InsideRaining.com. NRHA Million Dollar Sire Smart Spook, highest earning stallion in NRHA history. Sire of winners like NRHA Open Futurity Reserve Champion Red Stripe Spook and Reserve Co-Champion Spook Off Sparks. NRHA Non-Pro Futurity Champion Spooks and Sparks and Co-Champion Smart Chucka, as well as Custom Spook, earner of more than $176,000. Smart Spook, pedigree, performance, and proven longevity. Lease a horse, borrow a horse, ride with one hand or two. The Green Rainer class has a level for you. It's just fun to learn and progress. Jackets for green one, buckles for two. I'm working to get my next 50 points so I can um, get my buckle. Make friends. There's a lot of camaraderie. Make memories. We're all starting to clap for each other a little bit and watching people get better. Make dreams come true. Pursue your dream. The NRHA Green Rainer Program. Find out more at nrha.com. 
today we'd like to share a little showing tip with you. It's something that I teach my students and, and as a judge it's something that I see happen quite a bit. Um, it's how to buy enough room in a circle for a lead change in a small slow circle. So I'll demonstrate here what I do on our large circle and on our small circle. First w without a lead change and then how I get enough distance for a lead change in a small circle. Um, so I'll just do one of a regular set of circles for you first, a large and then a small, without a lead change. So this lead change should be perfectly round, and it's my large one. And then when I come to the center for a small one, I use a different exit than my big one. I turn here. I don't go in the same tracks as my big circle. I exit a little sooner, and I find the middle perfectly round like this without a lead change. Now, <clears throat> if I'm going to put a lead change on that small circle, the way I do it is I buy a little extra distance so that I can get straight enough soon enough to change the lead before center. A lot of times people are late on this lead change, they're past center and it costs them points. So I'll demonstrate now how you buy that extra room. I'll start again with the large circle and when I go to my small circle I'll show you what I do. Here I'm in the same exact tracks as my large circle. And when I come to the center, I'm going to take the same exit I took from my small one, which is right here. But what I'm going to do is right over here, I'm going to go a little bit deep and find the tracks of my big circle and come in on them so that I have plenty of distance here to get to the center and change that lead before the center. It seems like a relatively small thing, but it can mean a lot of points to you when you show your horse. I'll do it again on this side. This is my big circle. And it matches the circle on the other side. That's important that they're even. This is my little circle. And this will be a circle without a lead chain, so it'll be much rounder circle. It also, my horses won't look for a lead change because they know I'm not going to change the lead. Now I'll take the circle and extend it a little, come deep, pick up the tracks of my big circle almost, give me plenty of time for center, and I'm able to execute that lead change to a small circle, from a small circle, quite handily. So, that's something that I like to teach all of my non-pros. I find it really helps them because when you're showing, if you've shown, you know that that center can come up very quickly and, and <clears throat> oftentimes you change leads past center or up towards the judge and you're out of, out of the box, what they call the box, and you can get a half point or a one point penalty for that. So that's pretty much it. I hope that this little this little drill will help you and make you show your horse better and enjoy raining more. Now it's time to play You Be The Judge! An NRAJ game that allows you to test your judging skills against the professional. How would you score this maneuver? Find out what the judges say in just a moment. Join the NRHA professionals and non-pros who've experienced the continental difference. I haven't had any issues going from any horse to horse. Uh, I had a vet actually last year tell me that uh, she asked me if I ever had any problems with my horse's back. She asked me what saddles I, w I used and I told her and she said, well, you never have any issues with your backs on your horses and she's like, that's a great testimony of your saddle. Have you tried one of our saddles yet? Log on to ContinentalSaddlery.com and find out about our demo saddle program. 
Inside Reigning Training Secrets Volume 7 is now available with Jordan Larson on managing the downward transition, Todd Crawford on starting your horse in the rollback, Josh Visser on starting your horse in the circles, Mark Rafus on keeping your horse soft in the stop, and Dave Moore on making smooth lead changes. You can buy Inside Reigning Training Secrets 7 for $19.99 plus shipping and handling, or buy multiple Training Secrets DVDs and save up to 25%. Order at InsideRaining.com. Now, here's how the NRHA Judging Committee scores the maneuver. So how'd you do? Were you as good a judge as you thought you were? I'm Jody Brainerd with the NRHA Judges Committee. Let's take another look. And this is a good example of a plus half. Good rotation, good footwork, and appropriate speed with a good shutoff. Plus half. To learn more about NRHA judging standards, go to InsideRaining.com. Thanks for playing. You be the judge! Play contests on our Inside Reigning Facebook page and win prizes. You be the judge. Craigslist, find Fergus, and bet your boots. Win a saddle, tack, hats, DVDs, and more at Inside Reigning Facebook. The Billhorn Shootout is named for the NRHA Pioneer, Hall of Fame member, original million-dollar rider, and mentor to many in the NRHA, who was lost just a few years back. I was, I was close to Bill, you know, it, we, were, we were friends and did a lot of things together. He helped me a lot, uh, you know, with my horses, and, and, uh, and we miss him, so it was, a, it was an emotional event for, for everybody, I think, here, and it was, it was really neat, so it was an honor that, to win it. It was a competitive class filled with Rainers looking to drop and go in Bill Horn style. Josiane Gautier and H.J. the Looney Tune laid down a 226.5 for second place. Mark Rafus and Wimpy's Dunn Twiston were third with a 225. I mean, th that was what was exciting about it. I mean, obviously that's what it's supposed to be is, you know, I mean, drop it and go, you know. And, and everybody did, you know. They kind of dropped their hand and went for it, you know. And, uh, it was fun. I mean, there was you know a lot of good horses and people. People went and showed hard, and they wanted to do well and wanted to win it. And that's that's what was exciting. And God, everybody that was here just enjoyed it. Cheers, Bill. We're thinking of you.